What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at another mobile controller for your Android device, and this one is known as the GLAP Play. Some people are calling it the GLAP Play. And on paper, this looks like a really nice mobile controller for your Android device. And by the way, this controller was recently featured in the Galaxy Note 10 Play Galaxy Link commercial that they posted on YouTube when they announced the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. Over on the GLAP website, they do have a full list of games that are compatible with this controller, but it uses X input. So if you want to use this with emulators, you should have no trouble at all with pretty much everything on the Google Play Store. Over the past year, I've reviewed a lot of these Android controllers, and my personal favorite right now is the Sataki 7007X. This is a great controller. I've been using this every day with my Galaxy S10. The only problem is it won't fit some of the bigger gaming phones, like the Nubia Red Magic 3. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick up the GLAP controller and see how it performs. Now, the company does claim that it will fit up to a 7.5-inch screen phone, but you got to be careful with that because some of these phones do have pretty big bezels on them. This is definitely one of the more expensive controllers that I've ever come across, and I know the price might be off-putting to a lot of people, but I paid $80 for this on Amazon, and I've seen them as high as $115 on Newegg. Just for a point of reference, I paid $35 on Amazon for the Sataki controller I was talking about earlier. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box, see how it looks, and then we'll get into a little bit of performance testing with some native Android games and some emulation. So first things first, you do get this nice little zip-up protective carrying case. It's a pretty cool little addition here. I don't know how many times I'm going to put it back inside of here. But it's nice to have something like this if you're going to travel with this controller. So my first impressions, just seeing it right out of the box, it's pretty bulky. By the way, this does use USB Type-C to charge up the controller itself. And I believe this is going to be our USB Type-C charging cable. Doesn't come with any kind of power supply, so you will have to provide your own. They also provide a couple GLAP stickers and the instruction manual. I believe the instruction manual is in English, Spanish, and Chinese. So like I said, the controller does feel a bit bulky, and it has this spring-loaded action here. They did include a little warning sticker on here, don't get your fingers trapped, because the spring-loaded action on this thing is pretty tough. You could really hurt your finger if you got this locked up. So on the front of the controller, we have our two analog sticks. D-pad, A, B, X, Y, and four extra buttons down here. So you could have start, select, home button, and let's say a menu button. Around back, we also have triggers, R2, L2, and on the very top here, we have R1 and L1. These are a bit weird to get to. As you can see, they're kind of rounded. And for me, I don't think the design is great because getting from L1 to L2 or R1 to R2 takes a little bit of movement here. And it seems to me like the best bet would be use two fingers for the triggers in the rear. But when I'm using, let's say, an Xbox One controller, I use a single finger to go from L1 to L2 or R1 to R2. As fitment goes, this is definitely designed for bigger phones because even using the Galaxy S10 in here feels a bit odd. The phone feels a lot smaller than it really is inside of this controller. But nowadays, these phones have much bigger screens, like the Nubia Red Magic 3. This is a 6.5 inch AMOLED display. This is an awesome little gaming phone with a built in fan. It actually fits in here perfectly, and I've personally been looking for a good controller for this phone for a little while now because the Sataki one that I use for my Galaxy S10 just isn't big enough for this phone. Pairing up the G Play is easy enough. We're going to hold the power button. We'll get a blinking blue LED over here. And from the phone you want to connect to, just go to your Bluetooth settings. It'll show right up, and it's now connected. The good thing about the G-Play controller is it's working in X input mode so you can navigate throughout the Android operating system with just the controller. Moving over to some native Android game testing, this is Asphalt 9. Now you really don't need a controller with this game, but it is compatible and it works great. I gotta say, after using this for a little while, I've actually gotten used to the size of it. The buttons feel great and the analog sticks are spot on. The D-pad is a bit squishy for my liking, but you could get used to it. Minecraft Pocket Edition is another game that supports controllers natively on Android, and it works fine with this game also. One thing I do notice is the L1 and the R1 buttons are a bit loud. They're a bit clicky. I mean, they feel good and they work fine, but they are a bit loud. Here's Fortnite, and this is where these more expensive controllers really shine. Some of the other Bluetooth controllers that I've tested are a little iffy on the analog sticks, but these are spot on like I mentioned. 
This really gives me the feel of a premium controller, like let's say an Xbox One controller. Now if you don't want to spend the money, you can always use an Xbox One controller with Bluetooth and a phone clip. It's going to work just as well, if not better. I personally like the feel of the Xbox One controller over the PS4 or even any other Bluetooth controller that I've tested, but I really hate having my controller in a clip on top of the phone. I really love this landscape layout of these telescopic or stretchy controllers as some people call them. And it's really nice to see that some companies are taking mobile gaming with a controller seriously and creating premium products like this. Another thing I wanted to test before we get into emulation was PC streaming or cloud gaming. Now normally I would use Steam Link for this, but I've been using GeForce Now, otherwise known as NVIDIA Games, a lot lately on my mobile devices. I've recently created a video on how to get this up and running on your Android phone or tablet, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in here. We're going to go with Overwatch and we'll just see how the controller performs. No setup is needed for the controller in GeForce now because this is running in X input mode and it works really well. Enemies on my radar. Behind you. Moving over to some emulation, first up I'm going to test out RetroArch and this is detected as an Android controller. Everything just works straight out of the box. We'll get into a little bit of Saturn emulation here. And again, it functions fine here, it feels really good. Pretty much the same thing across the board, even with the PSP emulator, PPSSPP, no setup was needed whatsoever. The controller was detected off the bat and it works great with this emulator. This is ReDream, my favorite Dreamcast emulator for Android right now. I did have to do a little bit of setting up for the L and R buttons, but other than that, the controller is fine. And finally, the Dolphin Emulator for GameCube and Wii games. Now with every controller you do have to do a manual setup, but I went through it without a hitch and the controller works great. So after spending a lot of time with the GLAP controller, I can confidently say that this is a great Bluetooth controller for your Android device, but there are some cons and I'm going to go over those real quick. First up, the price. I paid $79.99 on Amazon, and like I mentioned, I have seen them go for around $115. I believe this is way overpriced for a controller like this. This should be sitting in the $39.99 to the $59.99 range. $80 in my opinion is just too much to spend on a controller like this. And my only other gripe with this device is the placement of the trigger buttons. It's really hard to switch between R1 and R2 or L1 and L2 with a single finger. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I guess they expected you to use two fingers for each of the triggers. When I initially saw this coming out of the box, I thought it was going to be uncomfortable because it does look pretty bulky. But after using it for a while, it's actually a really comfortable controller. The buttons themselves feel great, the D-pad is awesome, and the analog sticks for an Android controller are absolutely amazing. So in the end, I could definitely recommend the GLAP controller to anybody who has a big screen phone and doesn't mind spending a little extra on a controller for your mobile device. There are other cheaper options out there. To this day, I still love the Sataki 7007X, but it doesn't fit my big screen phones, and that was the only downside I had with that controller. I'll still use it with my smaller screen phones like the Galaxy S10, but one of the best controllers that you can use with an Android device is an Xbox One controller, and a lot of people have them laying around. You just gotta make sure it's the Bluetooth version that came with the Xbox One S, and grab a three to five dollar phone clip. If you don't mind having your phone on top of the controller itself, you really can't go wrong with the Xbox controller. It runs in X input mode, you can navigate the full Android operating system, and it'll work with every game on Android that supports controllers. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. In the end, it's really up to you. And I'm going to leave some links to Amazon in the description for the Xbox controller, the Clip, the Sataki, and the G-Play.
it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.